Welcome to worship at Westbrook Warren Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. Uh, I'm recording this worship service on Tuesday, and um, and you're seeing it on Sunday. And so I'm taping this with a little bit of trepidation because something that I'm finding is the world can change in a split second. So uh, my hope for you this day is that God speaks to you in this worship service and that you will find this experience uh, worshipful and relevant to what is going on in your life. So welcome. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, Gentle in your power and strong in your tenderness, you have brought us forth from the womb of your being and breathed into us the breath of life. We know that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from you. Feed our deep hungers with the living bread that you give us in Jesus Christ. May Jesus promise where two or three are gathered in your name, there I am in the midst of them, be fulfilled in us as we worship this day. Make us a joyful company of your people so that with the faithful people in every time and place, we may praise and honor you, O God most high. For we pray this, as we join in one spirit saying, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in the heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
This morning we continue our journey through Exodus with the reading from Exodus 32 verses 1 through 14. This passage comes from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come make gods for us who shall go before us as for Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt. We do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it into a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, these are our gods, O Israel who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before them, before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once, your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt has acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are our gods, O Israel, who brought us up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you, I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with, and with a mighty hand? Why should, why should the Egyptians say, it, is, it was with evil intent that he brought them up just to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised, I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he was planning to bring on his people. May God bless this reading to our hearing and understand of the sacred word. Our second reading this morning comes to us from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Please listen for the word of God. Therefore, brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for with my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, Odia, and I urge Syntychus, to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I also ask you, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. In everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, 
whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence and if there is any anything worth worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. Thanks be to God. A few weeks ago, I was on a trail that I had never been on before. As beautiful as the area was, and it was it was autumn in all its glory, I have to admit that I was a little anxious because I was completely unfamiliar with my surroundings. So I looked around and thankfully I spotted a map, big map posted. And uh, scanning the map, I located a big round dot. And beside the dot were the words, you are here. You are here. And I can't tell you how comforting it was to know exactly where I was on that trip trail. As we continue our journey through Exodus, the Bible offers us further insight into exactly where we are in this grand scheme of things. And it, and it gives us further information uh, about the nature of God as, as we gather to worship this day. For God is a God who not only delivers and provides as he did in the earlier portions of Exodus, but God is one who is faithful and slow to anger, even when we are faithless. Just before this passage, Moses had trekked up the mountain to receive the infamous, infamous Ten Commandments. But before he left, Moses told the elders of the tribe that they were to wait for him and that Aaron and her were in charge while he was gone. So if you had a problem, you were supposed to go to them. For 40 days and 40 nights, the people waited for Moses while he prayed on the mountain. During that time, God gave Moses instructions about how to build or construct the tabernacle which housed these tremendous stones. He also gave very detailed instructions regarding the vestments for and the procedures for the ordination of the priesthood. Of course, the people had no idea that all this was going on way up there on the mountain. And they had no idea when Moses was coming back. All they knew was that this man who had taken them out of Egypt into the wilderness was gone yet again, leaving them in unfamiliar surroundings. In the absence of a map that said, you are here, and in the absence of Moses, the people began to grow anxious. 
In Eugene Peterson's translation of this passage, he wrote, When the people realized that Moses was taking forever and coming down off the mountain, they rallied around Aaron and said, Do something! Make gods for us who will lead us. That Moses, the man who got us out of Egypt, who, know, who knows what happened to him? So Aaron told them, take off the gold rings from the ears of your wives and sons and daughters and bring them to me. They all did it. They removed the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from their hands and cast it into the form of a calf, shaping it with an engraving tool. The people responded with enthusiasm. These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up from Egypt. Aaron, taking in the situation, built an altar before the calf. Now, keep in mind that Moses had been a constant kind of calming presence for the people of Israel. In the midst of transition after transition and problem after problem, out in a disorienting wilderness, he had served as a beacon of hope, a north star, if you will, in the great unknown. In the absence, in his absence, the people grew restless and scared. And rather than sitting with their fear, which is really hard to do, they sought comfort in something tangible, in an idol. In this way, the golden calf was not only a surrogate for Moses, but was a tangible representation of the deity or deities responsible for delivering them from Egypt. Trying to find some middle ground between the one true God and these lesser gods, after he cast the calf, Aaron says to the people, tomorrow we will feast Yahweh. We will feast God. Some commentators argue that the calf is intended to function as a symbol for Yahweh, not other gods. But that's not for us to debate today. At the end of the day, I don't think we are much different than these Hebrews who were anxious. All too often, I think we when we feel lost, when we feel forsaken, lonely, vulnerable, anxious, we conjure God substitutes, images of God that reinforce our own belief of what God could be or should be. Thank goodness God is slow to anger. <laughs> well, my friends, I, I don't need to tell you this. But we are living in scary times. Maybe I'd invite you to fill in the blank. What kind of times are these? Are these scary times? Are they lonely times? Are they weird times, unpredictable times? You know, with economic and political instability, the threat of violence kind of always looming in the background, an invisible enemy at the grocery store, in, this, in our sanctuaries all around, um, fear kind of looms large. So, so if I was to fill in what kind of times these are, for me, that would be scary. Um, so, so what is that for you? Maybe you feel isolated, alone, abandoned, forsaken. Maybe you feel guilty for feeling none of that. Maybe you're restless or angry or frustrated by your own inability to actualize change. 
Whatever you're feeling, I want you to stop for a minute. And I want you to stop and consider the golden calves that you've created. And I want you to take that golden calf or golden calves and put it down. Actually, you know what? Take that golden calf and give it to God. Simply give everything that you're feeling in this moment over to God so that God can do something beautiful and wonderful with it. Because God, I've said this before, God has got this. Moreover, God is bigger than our worst fear. Through the scriptures, God tells us, you are here and you are mine. I have got this. I have not left you to your own devices. Be still and know that I am God. In closing this morning, I invite you to heed these words that we heard from Philippians. Beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the peace of God will be with you. Amen. Today, you have the opportunity of being a part of something bigger than yourself. Will you join us in co-creating the kingdom of God? Because your gifts and your pledges enable us to share the good news of Jesus Christ with the world. Please give as you are able to this United Church of Christ. Let us pray. God of our ancestors and faith, 
slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Thank you for your faithfulness, even when we are faithless. Forgive us our ingratitude for all that you have done for us and all that you continue to do for us. Deliver us from that which distracts us from your holy word and unite us in our mission to serve you in the name of your beloved son, Jesus Christ. Gracious and loving God, Forgive us our distractions and our grumbling in the midst of this pandemic. Even when everything around us says otherwise, remind us that you are with us and that in you there is always enough. Teach us your way of justice, generosity, truth, and grace. You've been so good to us, but too often in our fear and frustration, we forget that you are our ever-present help in times of trouble. Forgive us, O oh God. Holy One, we need you. Our country needs you. Our world needs you. We are expecting something the likes of which that the world has never known. In the midst of these changing times, we ask that you spare not the wicked, but the wise, that your blazing spirit might rise from the ashes, ashes, I might say, of our own making, and ignite a new world order that is pleasing in your sight. Where there is sickness and injury, help us so healing. Where there is hatred, let us so love. In the company of fellow sojourners, we lay before you now all of our joys and concerns. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Hear these prayers. O oh, Divine Master, source of consolation, understanding, and steadfast love, as we go forth from this worship service, inspire us to give more than we receive and to forgive more than we are forgiven, that we might find ourselves at last with you and all the company in heaven. Amen. I'm going to leave you both with a quote and a blessing. The quote is from Mother Teresa, and it goes like this. People are often unreasonable and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you're kind, people may accuse you of having ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you're honest, People may cheat you, be honest anyway. If you find happiness, people may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today may be forgotten tomorrow. Be good, do good anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. Give your best anyway. For you see, in the end, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. My friends, in your joys and in your struggles, May you know the peace and the love of God made manifest in Jesus Christ. Until next time, amen.